there are two locations where ozone is found on the Earth, the atmosphere and surface level. Although ozone found at the Earth's surface is the same chemical species as that found in the ozone layer, they have very different sources, atmospheric chemistry, and affect human health differently as well. Ground level ozone is a health hazard because it is located where people breathe. It is formed through a complex set of chemical reactions involving hydrocarbons, nitrogen oxides, and sunlight on calm summer days where the weather may also be warm and humid. Ozone is most likely to exceed safety limits from May through October when seasonal heat and sunlight are at their highest. A major cause of the conditions and precursors to ozone are the waste of heavy industries such as manufacturing plants, refineries, and coal-fired power plants. This means that although surface level ozone produced in one place can end up in another location, those who are near these sources can experience increased levels of ozone exposure. Secondary sources of ozone include automotive emissions and liberal use of household chemicals or sprays. It is believed that nearly 50% of pollutant ozone molecules are attributed to the presence of these. Ozone has real health effects for those who are exposed to it. Surface ozone is one of the most common air pollutants and causes airway irritation. It can also reduce lung function, even in healthy individuals. Sadly, for the millions who suffer from asthma, ozone can cause an increase in their symptoms such as coughing and chest tightness and difficulty breathing. This increase in symptoms can be life-threatening and lead to hospitalization. Additionally, exposure to ozone can increase the incidence of asthma in children whose developing lungs can be damaged by ozone. There are differences between groups in both the magnitude of exposure to ozone as well as the ultimate health effects from the exposure. A study of 98 neighborhoods found that community characteristics changed the health impacts of ozone exposure. A great effect of ozone was associated with higher unemployment, increased African American populations, increased public transportation use, and use of central air conditioning. These health impacts can be life-threatening. One study found that after ozone levels equated or exceeded 0.11 parts per million, there was a 37% increase in hospital visits for asthma for African American families in low-income areas. These gender, socioeconomic status, and race differences need to be investigated further to solidify ozone exposure as a public health problem to be solved in the coming years. Luckily, some efforts to reduce population exposure have been undertaken. In 2008, the Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, created non-attainment areas for ozone in which ozone levels shall not exceed the federal standard of 75 parts per billion averaged over the course of three years. And high altitude cities, like Colorado, will have more difficult time meeting the new federal standard. In order to ensure safe ozone levels in an occupational setting, federal regulations are in place in order to enforce workforce exposure limits for all working men and women. It is important to note that if substitution of safer chemicals is not an option, engineering controls are the most effective way of reducing airborne exposure of ozone. These controls include proper ventilation systems, proper respirators, and protective clothing. For people who are exposed through day-to-day -day activities such as exercising outside, warning systems have been put in place to help people plan their activities for times when their exposure will be lessened. State, county, and even local governments can announce ozone action days as much as a day in advance through the monitoring of approaching weather conditions and the Air Quality Index, or AQI. Luckily, the average person can have a big impact on reducing secondary sources of ground-level ozone. Basic steps to limit ground ozone that can be taken by citizens are controlling auto emissions by avoiding rush hour and drive throughs and doing proper car care such as maintaining the exhaust system and getting regular oil changes. You can also reduce the amount of time in the car by combining trips and fueling up at night. It is our hope, however, that with diligence and smart public health practice, that we can tackle the public health issue of surface level ozone and improve the health of the world one molecule at a time.